Hey y'all, I didn't have a video up last week, so I figure it's time for a bit of a channel update. Uh, my wife and I had to go out of town, we had a great time, and then I had some relatives come in from out of state. So today's the first day I've had to actually get out in my shop and start to try to do anything. So what I'm going to do is um, show you some of the things that I have done for cable management. Now, this is going to be a little bit different from my Gatton CNC build series in that this, this video here in particular is not so much a how-to video as it is me showing you what I have done for cable management on my machine. And the reason for that is, simply put, every build is just a little bit different. Every shop and shop layout is just a little bit different. So what worked for me may or may not work for you, and what will work for you may or may not work for me. All of my solutions have to be compact and keeping space uh, and the space used to a minimum where you might not have that concern. Also, all of the power in my shop is on this side of the CNC, so that's where all my power cords, etc., need to be run. Uh, with my drive box down towards the center of the CNC, I can run those in either direction, but since the X axis motor is mounted on the right side of the CNC, all my data cables are run over in. Uh, to this side. So you may not have any of those considerations, so I'm not going to really show you what to do as much as I'm going to show you what I have done. Okay, first things first, we're going to start off with the type of drag chain that I used. Now, if I had it to do all over again, I wouldn't have gone this direction. Uh, here we have the uh, 15 millimeter by 30 millimeter drag chain, and this is a 10 millimeter by 15 millimeter drag chain. And if I had it to do all over again, I would not have gotten this smaller drag chain. I'd have made everything with this larger one. And the reason for that is twofold. Now, in the uh, plus column on the smaller drag chain, it's all one piece. The, what I mean by that is each link is one piece. So it's compact, it's tidy, and you don't have pieces falling off uh, of it. It just goes in one direction, it bends one way, it will not bend the other way, and it's, it's neat and tidy. This is useful in an area where you don't have very many cables running at all. And I got this to use along the top of my x-axis thinking, well, I've only got the uh, z-axis uh, cable, stepper motor cable there, so I don't really have anything to worry about. What I wasn't counting on is how just how little room you have inside this drag chain. Yes, I've only got the Z-axis stepper motor cable, but I also have the limit switch cable from the Z-axis and the X-axis going through this at the same time. Plus, I had to use an extension cable on my Z-axis so getting that Molex connector in here was really a chore. And the minus column on these all being one piece, you, in order to fish that wire through there, uh, that, all those cables through there, you have to pretty much get a screwdriver or a pair of needle nose pliers and kind of play around and guide the cables through. So given what I know now, I would not have gotten this cable, this drag chain at all. I would instead have stuck with this size, which is uh, the 15 by 30 millimeter. Not only because it's bigger, it's taller, five millimeters taller than the other drag chain. So getting those Molex, connection, Molex connections to slide through it is a lot easier. But also these little tabs up here on front pop off and you can see how easily. Just stick a finger in there, kind of give it a twist and pop it off. You've got these two little tabs right here that hold all of these little pieces in place. 
and you can just pop them into one side, snap, and then snap it down on the other side, and it's all back together. That comes in real handy if you've got a piece that's already curved around like this, and now you've got to fish a cable through here. So overall, in general, the single size, the 15 by 30, if I were going to do it over again, this is the way I would go. Now, as far as how much drag chain to get, again, every build is different. Yours may be sized differently. You may have different uh, channels that your drag chain sits in. Personally, I ended up using two meters of this and two meters of this. And this is what I have left over from two meters of the smaller and two meters of the larger. If I had to do it over again, I could have gotten away Looking at this, I probably could have gotten away with just three meters of this. So I'll go ahead and I'll put a link in the description box below to both of these drag chains just so you can see exactly what I got. Okay, I'm gonna make my apologies here in advance. Uh, number one, the um, lighting back here is really bad. Number two, I had to go handheld simply because uh, my tripod won't fit back here. So uh, what we're looking at here is obviously the z-axis stepper motor and this is the drag chain that i put on the, the top it's fastened to the top of the z box with one of the drag chain ends uh, turned to a 90 degree angle it just simply goes up makes a uh, not a very big loop comes down and attaches to the back of this front z plate here uh, now you can see I've got the stepper motor cable run down here and in between the limit switches that I'm using for my x-axis. Uh, more on those in another video. And then the cable runs down here into this drag chain right here and this is the small, the 10 by 15. Then it goes around the corner, comes down into this channel and ends down here. Now, for this channel, um, if it's worth building, it's worth overbuilding. But then again, it pays to use what you have. This is a serious case of overkill. This is some eighth inch thick uh, aluminum, uh, one inch tall, two inch wide U-channel. I got this, oh my gosh, several years back for, this is the leftovers from a project. It was wide enough to go all the way across the gantry. And that was the reason I use it, used it. Uh, I could have used it down below for the bigger drag chain on the Y axis, but if I used a piece this long for the Y axis, I wouldn't have had anything big enough for the X axis. So this was volunteered into this job. Now, mounting the drag chain here, when I used Andrew Hegg's uh, alignment tool to line up my lead nut block here with the uh, hole in the upright for my x-axis motor. As it turns out, the lead nut ended up lining up almost perfectly flush with the top of this rear z-axis plate. So what I was able to do was just take a small piece of three-quarter by three-quarter aluminum angle that I had left over uh, from making the linear rails and drill some holes in it, screw it down, and then I bored a couple holes in it for these, bored a couple holes in it for these cable ties that you see here. Uh, and that's going to strap all the cables in once I get them all run. Then from there, I just fastened one end of this cable track here. I, I don't remember if I pulled this one off of the chain and flipped it over or if that happened down at the far end over here. But one of these two ends I did take off and flip over so they would both be sitting in pointing basically in opposite directions. Then I ran this down obviously around the corner through the cable and I haven't got it fastened down. Yes I do, uh, yes, I do have it fastened down. Just a simple drill the hole, put a screw and nut and a bolt down here just to hold it all together. At the ends of this channel I have two mounting brackets that I made and I'll focus on this one because it's simpler. This 
mounting bracket is nothing more than a piece of one inch by one inch by eighth inch thick aluminum angle that I salvaged from, oh gosh, somewhere. Again, I've been wagging these around, dragging them around for years. And what I did was I measured from the front of my gantry, front outside, to the back outside. Then I added enough of a measurement here, enough space to where I could mount this channel with a nice gap here for this Z-axis plate to travel back and forth without interference. So I believe this is on my build. This ended up being about an inch and a half, maybe a little bit more. Do measure your own. Make sure you leave enough clearance for this plate to traverse back and forth across the uh, back of the x-axis without any kind of interference. So uh, from there, let me get underneath here, you can see how I made the mounting tab. I just simply measured out this distance here, cut, made a cut right here, and then put this on the table saw and cut away the angle back in this area here. And that left this little portion right here to mount this uh, one by two channel with. And as you can see, it's just a simple single hole. Of course, you can see it if I keep it in frame. It was just a simple single hole with a pop rivet, and that's what mounts this channel to this bracket. And I did that at both ends here. And then here I've got some cable clamps set and ready to go. This is the stepper motor cable for my Z-axis and these will be for holding the limit switch cables when I get them in. And here you begin to see uh, what I'm talking about when I talk about fishing this through this cable was a bit of a chore. My gantry is so wide that I needed to use two extension cables. Uh, one connection is up inside here. We got the, the cable coming out of the motor. You have the cable coming out of the stepper and up into here. Then the connection is somewhere inside here. This is the extension cable running down this direction around here and it terminated here. I had to grab another extension cable, another six foot extension cable, plug it in here and then run it down the side and into this drag chain down here. So let's talk about this drag chain. This is the 15 by 30 millimeter drag chain for my Y axis. The cables for the Y axis stepper motors do not run through that drag chain. They run underneath the table and connect straight to the uh, stepper motor cables coming out of the drive box. So I did not need an extension cable for either the Y axis motors. I didn't need any extension cables there. I used two on the z-axis and one on the x-axis. This drag chain mounts with this little mount. It mounts to the bottom of the upright. This mount was uh, again sent to me by uh, Andrew Haig over at the Old English Workshop. And I'll put a link in the description box below to the uh, Thingiverse page where Andrew has all the files you'll need to either 3D print this mount yourself or maybe get a friend to uh, 3D print for you. If you don't have either a friend with a 3D printer or a 3D printer of your own, I'll also put a link to 3dhubs.com. They're kind of an unofficial registry of folks who have a 3D printer who would be more than happy to take on a job like this. Some charge a fee, some don't charge anything, they just like to use their 3D printer and want to get some more experience with it. Those links will be in the description box below. Now down here, this was probably the easiest little setup um, I've ever done on a CNC. And it was simply bodged together with parts that I already have. Now this is kind of a temporary arrangement. I will be doing some better mounts for this. But the channel that the drag chain actually rides in is uh, two pieces left over aluminum angle from the linear rails. Uh, I believe these were left over from these linear rails up here. 
and you see I didn't use all that much. It doesn't have to run the full length of the table uh, depending upon your setup. For my setup, this is a little bit longer than three feet. And I just screwed them down to this piece of scrap and in fact this piece of scrap is the board that I used to make sure that these rails were parallel across the table. I just cut it down and used it down here. You'll see these yellow hangers. Um, these I've had floating around in the garage forever. Uh, they came with an assortment of hooks I bought. The, the type that screw into a 2x4 stud in a garage to hang up shovel, shovels and rakes and implements of destruction. The right people will get that reference. And it seemed to me to be a perfect thing for here. I just drilled a pilot hole, screwed it in. It's vinyl coated. This sits down on top of it and the drag chain runs in this channel right here. Uh, what I've done down beneath, you can't see, uh, and I don't think I can get that low. I'm not a limbo dancer anymore. Uh, I've got a wood screw screwed into this piece of scrap back here pointing straight down to keep this from moving this way. And I have a corresponding wood screw at the other end screwed in up underneath to keep it from pulling back this way. So it's rigid enough, but it also has a little bit of give, so it'll move back and forth should the drag chain not be aligned perfectly. And you can see I just brought these down here. I need to do a little bit more zip tying up here and down here, but I'm still in the process of doing this. Uh, once I add limit switch cables, all of it will be connected up, and then it runs up out of the drag chain there, up over the rim of the uh, table stand, and then down into the control box. Down here, you can see the back of my enclosure for my control box. More on that in a video later on. You can see where all the wires go in. There will be a back put on this shelf back here, and that'll just kind of keep me from shoving something back there that'll damage one of the cables. There's going to be a back on this shelf and another one on the front shelf. So that's what I've been up to out here in the shed since I finished my Gatton CNC build. Now you may have noticed by the title of this video that this is not a part of the Gatton CNC build series. The Gatton CNC is finished. It's complete. If I wanted to, I could be cutting on this right now but I still have a few things I want to get done before I do that. So I'm going to be considering this accessorizing, doing some fine tuning on the build. But overall, in general, it's ready to go right now. So I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up down there. And if you want to follow along and see what else I do to this build and check out some of the things that I'm doing with it, hit that subscribe button down there. And whether you subscribe to me or not, I'd like to thank you very, very much for watching, and y'all take care.